Hey guys, it's Bub here. If you remember, a few months ago, we took a look at Tiny Tang, a miniature version of Windows 10 that was designed for really low-end systems. I believe it only took up probably roughly 500 megabytes of storage, I don't remember exactly, and it was extremely lightweight on resources. NT Dev still has not released a version for Windows 11, or also would be known as Tiny 11. So, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at an alternative to a Tiny 11, which is Nexus Lite OS 11. I found this while just searching the internet, and I'm really excited to take a look at it today. I believe it was developed by another YouTuber, who I'm sure we'll find out when we turn on this operating system. So let's get started, and let's just see what this operating system involves, and if we can create a better distribution of Windows by using a Windows 11 debloater. Now this version does not require TPM or secure boot, which makes me think that it is probably a modified ISO, well obviously it's modified. Yeah, we can see this is the Windows 10 installer, not the 11, which makes sense. If it was a Windows 11 installer, it would require TPM and Secure Boot. And right off the bat, we can see that this looks like a really weird clone of Windows. Of course, he has the plug in the top left of the display with his YouTube channel. And the background, it's kind of blurry, and there it is. We have a transparent Windows setup, copyright the world of PC. The setup isn't looking too promising. Um, we have the option between Nexus Lite OS 11 and Lite OS 11 Non-Defender Edition. I really don't know the difference, so I'm going to go with Non-Defender Edition. I'm assuming that has something to do with Windows Defender. And yeah. My first impressions is that, not criticizing the creator, it kind of looks like one of those bad clones that you see on the internet. Again, I'm not bashing the creator, I'm just giving my opinion. And hopefully once we get in the operating system, it will look a little bit better. Right off the bat, it appears like we just totally skipped the out-of-box experience and it booted straight into our desktop. And the first thing I notice with our desktop is it is sideways and duplicated. It, it looks like a graphical glitch, so I'm just going to go try to install VMware tools and try to figure out how in the world we can even get there. But so far, this isn't a good experience in my opinion. That's more like it. We have now full screen Nexus Lite OS 11. So just taking a look at the desktop, we can see that it is customized with a custom background, which is okay, I guess, but if you're trying to make a light operating system, I would just totally delete all the backgrounds so it doesn't take up space. We have this PC pinned, recycle bin, Nexus Lite OS toolkit, which we'll take a look at, extras, YouTube channel, and Discord server. Obviously links, to try and promote his YouTube channel. In the extras folder, it looks like we have some sort of driver. I don't know what this is for. Oh, yep, snappy driver installer. Yeah, this looks pretty uh, generic, I would say. A little bit shady, but it is what it is. Nexus Lite OS Toolkit. This looks like all-in-one tool exclusively for Nexus Lite OS. So it looks like we can clean up um, temporary files, tweak, tweak the system, gaming tweaks, um, compact the operating system, uh, change context menus, Windows apps, so download the Windows apps that were deleted, like calculator and stuff, which is honestly pretty cool, um, downloads, which is all cracked, so this doesn't exactly look very illegal to include in an operating system. We also have activate OS and office, which is also not legal to have in an operating system, and OS updates. These two sections aren't very legal, but as long as we don't use them, I think we should be fine. So just taking a look at some of the pre-installed things, the only things that are pinned to the start menu are settings and file explorer, and literally all the apps we have are file explorer, get started, Microsoft Teams, settings, the ease of access, and Windows tools. That is all that is installed. So this is honestly a pretty lightweight version of Windows, and I just want to see how much this, how much space this takes up. This takes up roughly 7 gigabytes. It's worse than Tiny10, but this isn't as minimal as Tiny10 was. So, the first thing is that there is no web browser pre-installed. Instead of installing a web browser, we're simply going to download Malwarebytes, because I would love to see if there's any viruses already in, like, through that Nexus software, if there's any viruses in that system. So let's go ahead and install Malwarebytes and just go ahead and do a full scan on our system. 
While we're running a full scan, we're going to install a fresh version of regular Windows 11 and use a debloating tool that I downloaded off of GitHub, and we're going to see how different the two are. One thing I did want to check is on Tiny10, you could not update the operating system, and this is interesting. Updates are paused until 11.11.2050. But if we resume updates, it looks like it's going to just start downloading updates for Windows. Yeah, it is. So let's go ahead and click done. And let's run a full scan on this system. Let's get started. Let's go ahead into scanner, advanced, custom, and scan C. Let's let this run. I can't wait to see what we find if we find anything. And we've already found one thing. Okay. Let's move over to our clean install of Windows 11. All right, so right now we are currently in our clean install of Windows 11. Everything is here from default. There are some things missing from the taskbar, but I believe I did unpin them. I know everything is installed because I just restored from a snapshot. So what we have to do is extract this debloating tool, which I've used it before. It's actually pretty cool, and it deletes a ton of things. So the first thing we're going to do is run the disable Windows Defender script, which is going to let us basically run the tool, because if Windows Defender is turned on, I'm pretty sure it won't let us run. It looks like Defender is gone. So let's run the debloat script and see if we get anything. The uh, first thing that we're going to do is just click on Essential Tweaks. Um, I'm not. It's creating a restore point right now, so hopefully we don't you know break anything, but we're going to basically run everything we're going to do the essential tweaks we're going to disable the action center we're going to disable background apps cortana all of the bloatware that's typically installed and we're going to see what happens i just want to see how lightweight we can truly make this operating system next up is the action center which i don't i think that's kind of critical to windows 11 it makes it more lightweight so we can live without it disabling cortana basic visual effects and i think those are the same thing changing them uh, I'm not sure if dark mode or light mode is better for performance. We're going to leave it at default. We're going to disable Windows Update, which I think does do performance a little bit better because it's not running in the background. Let's try the small taskbar. I've actually never seen a Windows 11 small taskbar. So, I mean, I guess that is pretty cool, but your action center things are a little messed up. So we're going to use the default taskbar. And I think that these are... Yeah, these are context menu things. So the last thing we're going to do is run uninstall OneDrive uninstall bloatware and uninstall edge we're going to run those and then we're going to take a look at our system a lot of stuff has really been removed here and even on all apps i thought we yeah ms edge is missing it can't even run um so we're not missing as much stuff as we are in nexus light os 11 but it is still a very minimal amount of things let's look at storage we are still using roughly 20 gigabytes of storage which we didn't compress anything, we just uninstalled bloatware, so I'm sure if we could compress things, we would be able to make it better. But I would believe that this is honestly more usable than Nexus Light OS 11, only because you know that this is coming from a legitimate source because you did it yourself, and you know, you're not missing crucial things for the system. So I would trust this more than Nexus Light OS 11. Let's go take a look at how our malware bytes full scan is going on the other operating system. Our full scan has finished and we found six things that are potentially malware. So what we have here is a registry key, two registry keys, Nexus LightOS toolkit, which is all of that, and whatever that is. I have no clue what that is. So this is all malware that was just in the operating system straight out of the box. So this makes me a little bit worried here. Let's go ahead and delete um, these files from the system just because Malwarebytes has detected them as a virus. So let's uninstall everything, delete, and it looks like Malwarebytes is going to crash, try and even delete all of this stuff here, which is a little bit weird, but uh, yeah. So this definitely isn't as good as Tiny10 was, and I can't wait for NT Dev to come out with a Tiny11. However, right now, this is like the only tiny version of Windows 11 that I could find right now. So overall, it's not bad. I would prefer if it, you know, didn't come with viruses pre-installed or whatever Malwarebytes is detecting. But overall, for being 
only seven gigabytes, I would say that it's pretty good. Besides the fact he's advertising his YouTube channel everywhere. With that being said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. And I'll see you all in the next one.